good morning uh, i am dr kanade today we will start our discussion about pktna 45 delay programming using timer 0 okay uh, delay the idea of delay we have discussed at the time of assembly language programming as well as at the time of our practicals when we wrote a double for loop for loop inside a for loop and uh, that's how we had created one delay function uh, during our practical but what in this particular topic what we are going to see is not the same this is the proper delay function this is the proper amount of delay that we are going to create in this particular uh, through this particular topic through the timers and since i have said uh, i have written here timer 0 it should give you an idea that there are more than one timers in the uh, in the pktnf right it is not only a single timer or there is not only one timer there are multiple timers in pktnf 45 and all of these we will see one by one uh, but right now in the third unit we are going to see only the timer zero programming uh, timer zero and uh, that programming we will see okay so Uh, the objectives or the out uh, the outcomes of uh, this particular section of the uh, of our subject will when we complete this module what you would be able to you can see you can take a look at this and you can find out that uh, how impact how important this particular topic is first thing okay let's say the first one is a bit simpler configure the pktna 45 microcontroller for different settings using bit operations so let's say this is in uh, this is not really a difficult task but this is one of the things that we will be able to do in fact we have been doing this while our, uh, while performing our practicals okay we configure but at that time we had skipped those things we will see uh, uh, some of those things in the in this uh, in this topic okay and then the uh most uh, peculiar one is how describe timer zero module along with its associated registers this timer zero module what i mean is there are different independent timers inside the pk 1845 ic itself we don't need anything external for time, time uh, for timers the timers are inbuilt inside the pk 1845 ic and to use that there are a lot of registers that we will need to work on we will see all those things and how to configure how the timer is uh, how we can uh, configure it what are the different settings of that timer what are the different modes of that timer and how we can use that timer that all these things we will see in this particular uh, topic then the most important seg part we will be able to design a time delay of required duration using timer 0 because that is the ultimate goal of timers right to design a particular amount of time delay for example 2 seconds delay or 1 second delay or 20 millisecond delay whatever we want we can design that kind of a time delay using timer 0 and finally we will be able to design a system to generate square waves of various frequencies square waves i am talking about we can generate square waves of various frequencies using the timer module for this particular unit i am saying only about square waves ultimately when we go ahead at the end of the uh, end of our full course in the until sixth unit we will be able to generate even different types of uh, periodic or Uh, yeah periodic waveforms will be able to generate different waveforms also but that is part of the uh, later units in this particular unit we will cover only up to square wave generation okay so and obviously all these things whatever we are going to see in this unit these are required for all the further units okay for unit 4 5 6 also these things directly or the concepts are required for the further unit so uh, pay, pay attention carefully to all these things okay okay so to begin with the configuration bits 
these bits need to be set very properly and those are also dependent on how our hardware model is built right we are going to use the microcontroller for controlling certain devices that's why actually we are learning this thing right we want to control certain physical systems and for that we need some hardware something will be connected to the microcontroller as inputs or outputs also and how we have connected what is the crystal oscillator that we have connected right oscillator specifications what is the uh, for the clock pulse generation what is the crystal oscillator that we have generated uh, we have connected if we have connected we will see on the next slide uh, next further slides couple of slides that there are different ways of generating that clock pulse for this particular ic and based on what hardware you have you must set corresponding values to the uh, for the oscillator specification also right so these are not independent things this whatever the configuration bits we are we are talking about those are also dependent on the our hardware system that we have built okay these configuration bits are transferred to the microcontroller through the hex file through the uh, there is a direct way we will write inside our program and those will auto directly get transferred to the microcontroller that we uh, through the hex file that we do using the uh, through the mplab id itself okay the recommended way of uh, writing this configuration bits to the microcontroller uh, the method recommended by microchip microchip is the manufacturer of pic right it is by through the assembler directive and the syntax for that particular way of writing is this okay hash pragma note down this is not a, a spelling mistake this is how it is written hash pragma then there is a space config then there is a space and then setting actually we have already used this i will show you through examples that we have already used this in our programs but this is how it has to be written and and as it is starting with a hash obviously it has to where shall we write it just after the hash include means like it it should be as a preprocessor directive if it is a c program and it is it will be called assembler directive if it is an assembly language program okay so the syntax is hash pragma config and then the setting okay now coming to the oscillator okay there are eight different ways in which you can connect oscillator for the for our particular ic all these details are not uh, now included in your syllabus they were in the in your earlier syllabus uh, this was a big part in the earlier syllabus uh, to configure uh, oscillator configurations in now uh, in your 2015 pattern that this particular section has been omitted but still some of the things that you must know uh, because we anyway we have to write this in our program but that depends as i am again saying that what are these these are the oscillator configuration right oscillator so what oscillator we have connected to the hardware based on that we have to select this bit okay in our case in our hardware that we have in our labs we are connecting high speed crystal oscillator okay high speed crystal oscillator means the uh, quartz crystal that we connect okay that we use and in our particular case we have uh, 20 megahertz crystal connected to our microcontroller there are as you can read this list there are different other options also like rc oscillator also simply you can connect but if you can if you remember your earlier subjects uh, through earlier whatever you have studied that you may know uh, you may know that crystal oscillator is more consistent in generating 
the clock pulses uh, without with minimum errors compared to RC. Okay, so these are different conf, uh, different ways of generating the clock pulses for the microcontroller. You can even directly connect a clock without connecting a hardware. Don't connect any hardware to the microcontroller. Just give external clock of particular frequency, whatever you want. That also it can. That there also that way also it can work. Now, if you are wondering why uh, these different ways of uh, oscillator configurations are, then uh, just keep one thing in mind that a microcontroller is not. This microcontroller may not always be the only controller in the system. Are you getting what I'm saying? There may be different, there may be a huge system and there may be different microcontroller based systems, even different types of microcontroller. Like uh, there may be a peak microcontroller, there may be a arm based microcontroller or there may be even some uh, other company manufacture other manufacturer microcontrollers we don't know how a huge system may be designed so in that case uh, they, that the system designer may use a single clock pulse generator and that clock may be provided to all the uh, subcontrollers so for that particular facility they may use this external clock or if let's say it is a single microcontroller based system, we will prefer this particular one, this one or this one, right? So it depends really on how you, are, you want to design your system, okay? Uh, then we have also seen some other configuration bits. Now, this is again, this is not, uh, this has been omitted from your uh, syllabus in, uh, in detail. So, but I still recommend that you go into the reference sheet that we have that I have uploaded on the on Moodle. Okay. Uh, this is let's say your reading homework, not nothing. You don't need to write anything, but this is your reading homework that you go and see what are these terms. Okay. What are some of these terms? You go and read this. Okay. Power up timer. Uh, if you can recall in our programs, we have put settings like this like probably most of the times we have written this right wt wdt you do you remember watchdog timer it was also in the 8051 at that time probably you might have studied watchdog timer do you remember any anyone can share if whatever you uh, you recall doesn't doesn't really matter if, if even if you are wrong just try to uh, say something about that watchdog timer anyone want to share something about watchdog timer okay watchdog timer is something uh, basically as the name suggests it is a timer so it is going to count time it is going to measure time and watchdog uh, general name what does it mean it is like a dog it is it will keep watch on something okay so putting it putting all this together what it does is it keeps a watch on the program and after the the particular time is over whatever the time is set after that particular time is over it will reset the microcontroller automatically okay so do we generally want this kind of thing do we generally want this kind of thing that the microcontroller gets reset after some some amount of time what will happen if the microcontroller gets reset we may lose a lot of information or lot of lot of part of our program we may lose out right so what actually is done is when we enable my watchdog timer the program when a program is properly written it keeps on resetting the watchdog timer itself okay so what it what it ensures is that 
the program is running properly it is not hang if the program is hung somewhere it will not be able to reset the watchdog timer so the watchdog timer itself will reset the program it will reset the microcontroller it is like uh, if if you don't reset me i will reset you so the program that we have written it has to keep on resetting the uh, watchdog timer continuously so that the microcontroller will be sure now that the program is not not hung somewhere it is working properly this is how the watchdog timer concept works generally it is uh, required for big programs and if you remember in our programs we have kept it off we have we did not turn on the watchdog timer because we we were just writing simple programs and we don't need didn't need the uh, resetting things uh, or to make the things complicated okay as uh, as said on the previous slides these configuration bits are set using this this particular instruction or this particular syntax okay this is written before any function before main just after the hash include line okay this is part of the preprocessor directive or assembler directive okay so this is how we are going to configure the uh, microcontroller settings you may enable it doesn't really uh, it doesn't mean that you cannot you can enable watchdog timer but then you will have to take care of resetting the watchdog timer also okay okay so mostly uh, how we we have written that that's how i'm uh, now showing you the code this actually this is what we have already uh, seen most of the times okay here as i as i said in the syntax the syntax is like hash pragma then there is a space then we write config then again there is a space and the setting so whatever settings we have we write one setting in a line okay and also note that here do you see any semicolon there is no semicolon at the on on any of these lines if you can recall even for this line there is no semicolon all the preprocessor directives if you can recall all the preprocessor directives which are written before the main function do not have semicolon at their end okay remember this thing that preprocessor directives do not have semicolon at their end okay okay now coming to our next part which is io port programming in embedded c this particular section or io port programming okay io port programming you already we have seen in second unit also and at that time we have discussed there are uh, three registers associated with the with every port that the uh, first is the port register second is the tris register and the third is the latch register and when we wanted to send some value to a port what we had to do we had to first configure the port as output port by setting tris value tris register to zero right when we set tris to zero that particular corresponding port becomes output port okay but to write those lines to write that code what we had to do first we uh, take the value zero zero in w then from w we move to tris then whatever value we want to write to that port we take to the w and then from w we write to the port right in c programming it becomes very uh, clear very simpler and uh, since c programming as the advantages while while we discussed the advantages of c programming we already said that c programming being an higher level being a higher level language we write instructions in human readable form right human readable so you can see when i want to set port b as output port what we write simply tris b equal to 
otherwise what we had written move lw 0 0 move wf tris b we had run two instructions that to in assembly language which is much more difficult right more, many of you had uh, many of you may have found that assembly language is quite difficult to understand to remember all those instructions and stuff like that here just name of the register equal to sign and the value that you want to put in that register that's it very simple right then what this instruction will do trace b equal to zero what it will do it will set the port b as output port and then what i want as the what is the problem statement here make port b as output port so for that we have written this instruction and send value aa to port b again we will do the same simple thing port b equal to sign 0x aa right in a single human readable or simply sim, uh, easily cognizable way we can assign values to any register basically that is the uh, main advantage of using the c programming for writing our programs that we can use this kind of human readable here you can simply see that this aa value is going to port b right here you don't have any uh, uh, there is no question of any confusion right that which value is going where whereas in assembly programming if you have a, some kind of uh, misunderstanding or uh, you, your understanding is not very clear about the assembly instructions then you may get confused that why we have made value uh, taken value a from a to w and w to uh, port b right because i will write those two instructions here for this particular part when we want to send value a a to port b what we do move lw 0x a a and then move W F port B right these two instructions are required for sending value double A to port B now why we need these two instructions because we cannot write a value directly to any register so we have to take it in working register and then from working register we have to move it to the register again there may be confusion whether it is going from w to f or f to w what is the source what is the destination you have to remember everything regarding that instruction when we are talking about assembly language program therefore when we come to c programming it is a simple statement like this which is quite intuitive it is just telling you that this AA value is going to port B without any confusion. And this is why when we go for bigger programs or more complicated program, actually when we will write some uh, actual programs for controlling uh, some electrical systems, that time we will be using C programming, embedded C programming only because that will make our programming task much simpler this was one of the advantages what we discussed about embedded c advantage right okay so when we are programming the io ports through embedded c we can do it like this as uh, well the uh, basic hardware requirement is same that when we want to send some value to a port we first have to make that particular port as output port that is requirement and for that you must use the tris b register because we are talking about b port so tris b register we must make zero okay this while one what it is going to do it is an infinite loop infinite loop and since there is a single statement here 
inside while there is no real requirement of curly braces even if you write this curly braces it will be okay even if you don't write it will be okay because there is a single statement inside the while loop okay but if you note down here i have written bytes we are talking about sending bytes to the port but what if i want only a single bit to go to some pin of the port you remember this kind of uh, question we have solved we only send a, a single bit or we toggled a single bit also and for that we used bit operation bit operated instructions right bit operations like cl um, bcf bsf those kind of instructions we have used how to do that same kind of thing in embedded c let like for example if i want I, now this is a, a little bit bigger problem i want to make pin rc2 of port c as an input pin and write its value to which pin to rb0 means i will take whatever value on rc2 is and i will put it on the rb0 so let's say, see this is the pin diagram of the of our pick 18458 okay so what i want let's say i have some sensor uh, in my system and that i am connecting to connecting to rc2 pin here rc2 pin this pin number 17 okay so let's say that sensor it is a digital sensor that is connected here to rc2 pin okay this sensor may have a value 1 or 0 we are for the moment only talking about digital values we will have some analog sensors also that we will see later at the in the fifth uh, in the sixth unit okay but right now we will, let's say we let's concentrate only on the digital sensors or only having digital values okay so let's say this is the level sensor which will tell us level is full or not on or off that's it okay so this value can be 1 or 0 that is connected now to rc2 based on that let's say i want to turn on the uh, turn on or off my uh, pump and that will be done through obviously through a relay so that is what i'm let's say i'm going to do uh, that this rc2 value whatever it, it is coming from the sensor I will do something inside the microcontroller and I want that value to go to RB0. Okay. So RB0 may have a relay or simply an LED, just an indicator that level is full or not, whatever. This is just a very basic idea of how this system may work, how we may design our system. Let's say uh, the sensor is level sensor. It is going to show us on or off whether the tank is full or not if it is full it will say uh, show uh, it will send one that one will come here okay when tank is full it will send one that one will come at this particular pin and through our program that one will now go here and let's say we have connected it to led led will glow so level indicator right level full led is on level not full led is off this is a very simple level indicator system right and how to do that just connect that sensor to rc2 connect the uh, connect the led to um, rb0 and write the program inside the microcontroller so now we are going to just write that sim the section of that program which will take the value from rc2 and put on rb0 now how do we do this rc2 okay so for that we have this particular syntax of modifying bits in a microcontroller what i am saying we are modifying bits of the of a, any register we are modifying bits of any register inside the microcontroller for that 
in assembly we had the bit instructions like bcf bsf those kind of instructions we had in c programming we have this particular syntax if you can see the similarity between these two you should be able to note down that this first part what is this it is the name of the register tris b see remember i want rb0 as output right means bit 0 of port b so if i want bit 0 of port b as output that will be set through tris register bit 0 and for that we are doing this name of the register for here in this case it is tris b bits note down the capitalization or the uh, the script capital or small also note down that this b being the name of the register it is always in capitals bits these four letters are small letters then there is a dot and then there is name of the bit this b0 and that bit we are now setting to zero when we set this particular bit to zero it will make it output and we wanted the we said the sensor is connected to rc2 so tris c2 this is this has to be made one again the syntax is same name of the register followed by bits without any space and dot name of the bit bits are named in this way tris b0 tris b1 tris b2 tris b3 tris b4 tris b5 tris b6 tris b7 likewise for the port bits those are named like this rb0 rb1 rb2 rb3 or rc1 rc2 rc3 ra1 ra2 ra3 like that the port bits are named r a uh, r name of the port and name of the number of the bit that way okay here we wanted only this particular bits to be set to 0 or 1 you if your program is small if you are sure that you don't need any other pins of that particular port then you can also use this you can set the full port as output and this full port as input ff means one 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 so this complete port c will be used as input and complete port b will be set as output however its actual pins will not be used but this is not recommended you should follow this particular uh, approach only okay so this is how you manipulate any bits inside any register in the microcontroller here also we are following the same syntax see here port b this is the name of the register followed by letters bits right port b bits there is no gap here note down there is no gap port b is in capital bits is in small dot rb0 rb0 is the name of the bit what we want we want this value to go here right from rc2 we want the value to go to rb0 that is what our problem statement was so in this case it is quite easily done again in the intuitive manner you can clearly read what is happening this value is going here so rc2 value is going to rb0 right so very simply you can perform tasks in embedded c however the part of the syntax you must re remember like this whenever you are man manipulating any bit in a microcontroller you must note down that that particular bit will be accessed in the same way name of the register in capital followed by bits dot name of the bit here you uh, sometimes you may find that if you, that there is no name specifically given to that bit then you can have 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 like that also okay so here we will stop 
and in tomorrow's lecture we'll continue uh, our discussion further and we'll talk about timers also